All right. And so I just finished up listening to King of Thorns, uh, the second book in the Broken Empire series by Mark Lawrence. And man, I disliked that book pretty much every part of it. Uh, I'm going to give this book a two out of five. There were a few things that I did like. Mostly I disliked it though. And I saved my one out of five ratings for books that I didn't finish. Um, and I did finish this book. I kind of wish I didn't, though. I, I wish I gave up. I kept thinking that this book was going to get saved by the ending, and it didn't for me. The first book did. Uh, I, I was kind of down on the first book until I got to the last like third of it, and things really picked up, and the story got a little bit more cohesive, um, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. That just didn't happen for this one. Um, the story itself uh, w was really hampered by a severe lack of tension, and it, it, it's... Partly because I thought that the plot was weak and it didn't expand on a on a grandiose plot that I was really hoping would happen here. Um, it was a a plot of a of a man trying to become emperor, and you already know what's going to happen. And part of the reason you already know that's what's going to happen is the name of these books. The first book is called Prince of Thorns. The main character is a prince. The second book is called King of Thorns. Guess what? He turns into a king by that second book. The last book is called Emperor of, of Thorns, and guess what? He turns into an emperor. These aren't um, spoilers. This The author sells you this up front. And the fact that you know the conclusion of these stories before they happen ruins any sense of tension. Um, and it's not thoroughly fun even knowing that. And so the story just felt so boring to me that it, it was just frustrating. Um, I felt like the world building was essentially non-existent. And I, I go into fantasy books really looking forward to good world building. But this is Earth. At many, many, many years after present day. Um, in kind of a dystopian type of world. But it lacked a lot of effort where it just... There's nothing unique about it. It's just Earth. And... So it, it didn't, I, I wasn't like lost in wonder like I get in fantasy books. What I really enjoy about fantasy books, um, it just felt like a lack of effort on the author's part to make this setting nothing unique. Um, and the locations were also similar. I mean, I couldn't tell you the difference in scenery or the villages or anything that goes into proper world building. It just didn't, it wasn't there. Um, Likewise, the fantasy elements in this book were, I struggled with them because, you know, they, they did exist. In fact, they're, they're more prevalent in this book than, than the previous one. And I like, I like really well-written fantasy elements in my books. But what happened here was the main character since the first book has essentially like inexplicable, inexplicable superpowers that come out at random moments to save him when he needs them most. They don't feel earned. Um, it, again, ruins all tension in the book because you just know that nothing bad can happen to this guy. Nothing is going to put him in jeopardy. Um, and you know the ending. And so it, it, what, what would have to save it is beautifully written book, which I didn't feel this was. This book reminded me a lot of, uh, of the Red Rising series where it's written from this first-person perspective, really matter-of-fact writing, um, jumps from major p major scene to major scene with nothing in the middle to really give you that um, that character building. Um, and books like this can be saved by amazing characters. And the characters were the worst part of this book. Um, the main character is a horrible human being. He's a sociopath. And it feels like, if you like this book, more power to you. I love a lot of books that a lot of people dislike. And so I don't want to say that this is a bad book. I will say that I didn't like this book. But it felt like I would have liked this book a lot more had I been a lot younger. Um, because I maybe would have connected with this or, or felt like it was really edgy. This character that was just a, an evil person that you want to root for. But I didn't want to root for him. Um, I wanted to root for his main opponent. This really good man that you can't say anything bad about. And I kept wanting wanting him to be victorious. And that's usually not a good element to books when you're actively rooting against the main character. Um, First Law does this, but they do it really well. They have a character, um, Sandan Glockta, 
who I've said multiple times is maybe my favorite character in all of fantasy. He's a horrible person. And um, even if you don't root for him, there's other first-person perspectives in that book that get to balance that out a little bit. But that didn't happen here. Um, the book is written in a very odd style. And it's the, the first book was written where there's two timelines happening at the same time by the same point of view. So that gets a little confusing. Um, this book has four timelines, three of them being the same character. And it is extremely confusing. And I don't mind confusing when it makes sense. Um, my favorite series of all time is Malazan. And Malazan is probably you know, the poster child for confusing books. But it feels like you, the confusion stems from really complex stories. Um, and throwing you right into the middle of a world and not giving you all the information you need to understand that world until you've read many books and it doesn't hold your hand. This one felt confusing just for the sake of trying to do something different. I feel like if this book was written in a chronological timeline, that it would have fixed a lot of problems with this book and it would make a lot more sense. But ultimately, I feel like the author was just trying to do something for the sake of doing something. But I don't think it benefited the story with that choice that was made. So I hated the main character. The side characters, and there's many of them, don't get a proper background to them. You don't get to delve into them deep enough to understand their motivations. And ultimately, they feel all like the same person. Um, and it just it harms the story so much um, that it's frustrating. So I left frustrated. Um, I feel ultimately like this is one of the most overhyped books I've ever read. Um, and I, I don't want to say it's like the most overhyped book I've ever read because I recently um, got through reading uh, the the Broken Earth, the first book in that. And that's maybe the most overhyped book of all time. But so maybe this is the number two for me. Um, you know, more power to you if you like this. Wasn't for me. I'm bowing out of this series. I have no faith that this third book in it is going to save it. I do feel like I want to give this author more of a chance, though, because um, there were choices that were made that if made differently, I feel like I might have ended up enjoying this. So I've heard many good things about uh, uh, several books that he's written outside of this one. I do want to give Red Sister, I think it's Red Sister, a chance. Um, and I, I plan on reading that maybe later on this year, maybe early next year. Um, but... So yeah, that's, uh, that's my review. Hope I didn't upset you too much with this. And thanks for watching.